There's this one thing that can hold you back from receiving your full deliverance. That is this one thing that can actually keep you physically sick and can actually usher you into premature death. This one thing is also holding your prayers from being answered and it can actually forfeit your own forgiveness. Scary, huh? In just a moment, I'll answer what that one thing is. But before we do that, my name is Vlad. I'm a pastor of Hungry Gen Church and I also release books, e-courses, blogs and reading plans. All of that information can be found on my website and all of that is free of charge. This is our desire to help you grow spiritually. So now back to our topic, this one thing is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, not only it blocks the flow of freedom, healing and forgiveness of God, but it also hinders our prayers and unforgiveness can actually be an open door to demons if we hold on to unforgiveness long enough. Now forgiveness is a beautiful word when you are the recipient of it from God. It becomes a total different game when you have to now be the one who responds in forgiveness to people who have hurt you. I know you probably have heard about this, we all need to forgive and everything but in this video we will dive in into why it's important and what forgiveness is not. Now forgiveness is a process by which a person is released from the consequences of an action against another person and is restored to a positive relationship to the offended party. The reason why people hold on to unforgiveness and grudges is because a grudge takes a lot of time and energy and they're not sure who they will be without it. They have replayed their personal betrayal and hurt movies so often they know it by heart. And the idea of moving on is so terrifying that misery, hate, bitterness is way more familiar. The offender has done nothing to deserve forgiveness, therefore we hold on to unforgiveness. Harboring resentment protects us from getting hurt again and nobody can get close to us. But all these are lies. Because the truth is when you relinquish past hurts, it will free you to embrace your future. Also, when you're not spending time and energy feeding that grudge, you can actually nourish new and healthy ideas. The offender cannot keep hurting you when you actually shake off their shackles and move on, not when you are locked in bitterness, offense and hurt. Holding on to a grudge does feel like a form of control but in reality, you're not in control, you're being controlled. Once you lower your defenses, you can actually start to heal, love and be loved. Yes, feeling angry feels good temporarily, but being healed feels so much better. We have to understand as Christians, God mandates us to love because we first were loved by Him. He also commands us to forgive because He has first forgiven us. The reason why forgiveness is essential for us is because God needs us to forgive. The forgiveness we receive from Him is actually can be forfeited if we don't forgive those that have offended us. Jesus told that to us in the parable where the king, he pretty much reversed his forgiveness to his servant who did not forgive his servant. Second reason you need to forgive is because the people who have hurt you need it. It's the only bridge they have of changing when you forgive them because now they can experience the power of God's love and forgiveness. And the third reason why you need to forgive is for you. You can't experience full freedom, healing and your prayers being answered if there is unforgiveness in your heart. One of the things that we ask all the time before praying for deliverance and healing is, is there any unforgiveness in your heart? Why? Because it's not just a protocol, it's not just a routine, it's actually powerful. If you release unforgiveness, you get released from the bondage that has taken captive of you. Somebody said that to forgive is to set the prisoner free and to discover that the prisoner is you. I heard another quote that he who cannot forgive breaks the bridge over which he himself must pass. Whoever opts for revenge should dig two graves. Not forgiving someone is like drinking rat poison waiting for a rat to die from it. In Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 through 15 Jesus says, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. 
Forgiveness is not optional if you want to go to heaven. Now we're not saved by forgiving other people but we forgive other people because we are saved and Jesus makes it very clear of how dangerous holding on to offense and unforgiveness is. Now when it comes to forgiveness a lot of people don't actually understand what is forgiveness and what is not forgiveness. So I want to mention next 10 things of what forgiveness is and forgiveness is not. Number one is forgiveness is not overlooking the wrong, excusing the wrong, minimizing the wrong or taking the blame for someone else's wrong. When Joseph forgave his brothers who did what they did to him, he wasn't excusing what they did, he wasn't taking their blame and he wasn't minimizing it. So when you're forgiving somebody you're not minimizing the pain, the hurt, and the wrongness of what they did. Secondly is forgiveness is not waiting for an apology. This is huge. So many people hold their forgiveness toward their offender until their offender comes to the realization of what they did was wrong. Jesus forgave those who have put Him on the cross. They never apologized. In fact, they were mocking Him as He was forgiving them. You don't need to wait for them to repent for you to forgive them. Forgiveness doesn't need them. It just needs you to respond to God in that situation and forgive them. Number three is forgiveness is not forgetting and ceasing to feel pain. See, forgiveness starts the healing process but forgiveness doesn't immediately mean you will be healed immediately. Jesus helps you. Jesus heals our hearts not just our bodies and so when you begin to experience that forgiveness, your wounds, the ones that hurt will be turned into scars and then your scars will become your testimony, a testament of God's goodness and grace. But the residue will still be there. Even Jesus has scars to prove of what He went through on the cross. And so the idea that if you forgive immediately, you will stop feeling pain or you will quickly forget, forgive and forget. I know we say that in our culture, but it's not possible to forget some of the things that we went through. But you, we may be able to look at those things in our past as a scar instead of a wound if we forgive. Fourth thing is forgiveness is not a one-time event. For many people, forgiveness is a reoccurring event where we forgive initially and then the thoughts flood and we find ourselves back in the same place of bitterness, hurt and instead of being disappointed, see forgiveness as a process through which you are learning to respond to God in any given situation. And if you need to forgive that person again, forgive them again. If those thoughts flood your mind and you let them stay and germinate in your mind, forgive them again. Why? Because it's through this process you are learning to be more like Jesus Christ. Number five, forgiveness is not trusting. Forgiveness does not mean you can trust this person. For example, if there is an abuse that happened in your family, you can forgive that person but you can still call police on that person. Forgiving that person doesn't mean they should be entrusted with the same responsibility if they squandered that opportunity. Forgiveness does provide for an opportunity for the trust to be restored but it does not restore the trust. Forgiveness is free. Trust is not free. Trust needs to be earned. Forgiveness does not need to be earned. Number six, forgiveness is not reconciliation because it takes two people who repent to be reconciled. If one person repents, reconciliation cannot happen. It takes two to repent. And if you repent or you forgive but the other person doesn't repent, reconciliation cannot happen. Though many times forgiveness leads to reconciliation. Number seven, forgiveness is a command, it's not an option. Forgiveness is not like, well, you know, they did so much bad, I can't forgive them. You cannot afford not to forgive them. You must forgive. It's a command of God. Don't wait on your feelings and your mood to catch up. Just take a step of faith and do what God asks you to do and you will see God on the other side giving you strength. To forgive that person. Number eight, forgiveness is a gift God gave you to share with others. If you begin to look at the forgiveness you received from God as not just like a bottle where it has only one opening but as a channel that has an opening on one end and has an opening on the other end, then you will see that God wants you to be a carrier of forgiveness, not just a container of forgiveness. So many times we receive and we benefit from the forgiveness of God, our guilt is removed, our shame is removed, our relationship with God is restored and we feel like we'll praise God. Well forgiveness is not meant to be that only. Forgiveness is a gift God wants you to share with other people. Number nine, forgiveness is not a feeling, it's a decision. You don't have to feel like you've forgiven, you can make a decision and forgive. Sometimes our feelings 
are not the best indicators of what is happening to us actually, of what is happening in us. So don't pay attention to your feelings, pay attention to the decisions that you have made because that is what matters. And number 10 is forgiveness does not change the past but it will enlarge your future. It can change what they did, how they did it, but it can change what you're going to do in the future. So many times people feel like if I forgive, I will let them off the hook. You won't. If you forgive, you will let yourself off the hook and you will set yourself free from the bondage and the shackles that you are in. They keep harassing, keep hurting you if you don't forgive. But when you forgive, this bad thing that happened, happened in the past. It's not reoccurring in the present because through unforgiveness, this abuse, this hurt is reoccurring right now without them being involved in it. There's only one way to forgive and that is to be reminded how you have been forgiven. The key to forgiveness is this, we forgive because we have been forgiven. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 it says, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. Who do you need to forgive today? Who are you harboring feelings of hate and resentment toward? Is it somebody that walked away from your life? Do you feel trapped in bondage? Maybe you have nightmares and some kind of a terminal illness, arthritis perhaps, that you're looking to be healed, to be healthy, to be freed. If you have somebody you need to forgive, let's do that right now. In fact, let's pray right now and in this prayer, I want you to ask God to forgive you for unforgiveness, holding offense and grudges and release that person from owing you and give that gift to that person. Let's say this with me, say, Lord Jesus, I repent for holding on to unforgiveness. I thank you for the gift of forgiveness you have given me to share with everyone. I release that person. I forgive them for what they did. I put them into your hands, God. Would you heal my heart? Would you turn my wounds into scars and use my scars as a testimony? I thank you. And now God, set me free. Now precious Jesus, heal my body heal my mind and my relationships in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this was a blessing, hey don't forget to hit thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, click on the bell so you can be reminded each time we upload new content. Thank you, until next time.